It's not like we haven't done this before. All right. I think we're live. Welcome, everybody. I got uh, two of my buddies here, Big Jim and T.O., and they're going to they're gonna help me out in case I need help, which is probably the case. Um, today's show is talking about a uh, homebrew antennas and just various examples and stuff. Now, we're waiting on my good buddy, Simon Hamjazz. Oh, you probably hey, know him. Yeah. Uh, he's supposed to be here, but he was just out doing a POTA activation. So I believe he's been delayed for some particular reason. He was going to, he was going to join us there live. Uh, he says two minutes. He just texted me and, um, we're going to actually have him walk through the antennas that he uses in his activations. And he's got three different homebrew antennas that he's been using. Uh, one of them just is made out of like old car parts and stuff. Yeah, well, it's like, like, like it's like scrapyard Sanford and Son antenna farm. Exactly. Right. You know I know. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yep. Nice Liberty Cave. Um, one of them that he uses is a tarp and he just ran me metallic tape around the tarp and he uses it on 15 meters. And if you were at field day and somebody rolled up with that thing, I mean, you'd be like, this dude's crazy. What is he even? Th you, you know what I mean? Like you just wouldn't give him any credit for anything. But he takes it out and he kills it. You, you know what I mean? Like he just absolutely kills it. So I think uh, it's his charming personality. Chuck. Yeah, and then the um the other one that he has is he made a tent pole, uh, two element Yagi that he uses, and um it does it does ten meters and it does fifteen depending upon how many segments of the tent pole he's got folded out. I don't know how he cap <laughs> <laughs> did the math calculations or any of that kind of stuff on there. So we're definitely going to ask him. You know, math is different down under. Yeah. And, uh, well, he's, he's up yonder. Not, he's actually in Canada, right? Depends on what I day think, of the week it is. Cause he's been to Australia because he was going to set up his flex at his sister's house or something like that. He's going to go yeah, full he, Don on it. He just got back from, uh, Australia. Well, he, he goes down there to shear the sheep, right? Doesn't he have like a, a sheep, sheep factory or something down there? Yeah. Him and McLeod's daughters. Yeah, so they go down there and, and uh, like, like the three sheep. people in the chat might get that reference. <laughs> right. I get that reference. But um, sure. and then he's got another antenna that he just built and it's a tape measure vertical. And he he runs a tape measure up a mast and then he's got a pulley at the top of the mast connected to the tape measure so he can pull the, the string on the pulley and it raises and lowers the tape measure. Hey, uh, John? Slow down. I don't know if he's using ham sticks or not. I, I hope to God not. That, the stream will end quick. We we might have to kick him off the stream if he I'm says, I like ham sticks, mate. I'm going to have to go get my uh, my ham sticks. And speak, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. How do we get this comment out of here? Oh, I got it. <laughs> G'day, guys. G'day, Simon. Simon. How you going, buddy? Oh, is this working? Just working. I, well, I was just watching you, and you were definitely putting in the effort. Mate, I'm, I'm just trying to work out because uh, I spoke to T.O. yesterday the about the, the joys of technology and uh, and also just trying to work out, is there a simple way to be able to get use uh, third-party software, uh, sorry, third-party headphones and, uh, and <laughs> sorry, third-party microphone and headphones, but apparently there's not, so I have to be on my little tablet. So, uh, g'day, guys. How you doing, Jim? Hey, Simon. Hey, how are you, Hey, Chuck. Hey, hey Steve. Hey, Simon. Hey, hey, Simon, you have blur your going, background mate? turned on in StreamYard. That's probably going to make it really hard to point to antennas. Probably. Right, I just need to. So no do, why don't you guys just talk amongst yourselves for a sec? I've just got to work out how to turn the volume up here on this wonderful tablet that uh, I love to hate. I'll tell You know what? I'm going to say that I love it right now because it's my, uh, it's my lifeline, right? Right. I hear you. Well, it's funny because somebody we're logged into StreamYard under my account. So somebody just replied to somebody, said, congrats. Man. I did. So, I did. I saw that. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's been hacked. <laughs> Jim does that to me every so often, too. Like, I did not say that. Yeah, it, it definitely it definitely got me. But congrats, Matt. He just got his general last Saturday. So oh, he's nice. doing an off-center fed dipole. So good luck with it, brother. All right. There we go. I think I've got it sorted now, guys. Looks good, yeah. We can see the antennas that we're going to be talking about. <laughs> Ape loves hamsticks. He does. That's right. <laughs> well, so, Simon, I was just telling everybody about your antenna farm out there, and I was lovingly calling it, like, the scrapyard antenna farm because it's like you just made it out of whatever you had laying around. But uh, I, I guess we could start by talking talk about the tarp. I was saying that 
if you rolled up to field day with that tarp, I would think that you were absolutely insane. But uh, I watch you make tons of contacts. I have a lot of fun with it. So, oh yeah, mate, totally. So uh, the thing about this is um, Victoria, where I live. I mean, look at this. It's probably um, in the sun. It would be about 70 degrees, I'd say. And uh, so it's like the quote unquote Riviera of Canada. We get 50% more sunshine than the rainy city of Vancouver, which is only 60 miles north of us, uh, all because of the Olympic Peninsula over here. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I'll get to the point here, eight, I promise. But uh, basically, there's a big rain shadow here, and we get like 50% more sunshine than Vancouver. So the downside to that, sadly, is we have a big homeless population here in Canada and a homeless problem. So a lot of downtown, you know, there's the uh, there's the uh, the dreaded blue tarp, right? So <laughs> right, oh, right, right. So you'll see them all down the side of the highway and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, no, it's great. It's 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 a it's a fun. It is a fun tarp. I just I have to make sure. One guy did come up to uh, Doug and I just before and said how long are you here for? I said, well, just an hour. I'm about to go on a live stream with my mates. He said, good. Cause I don't think you should uh, try. Yeah. You know, I did. I don't think you should uh, leave it there overnight. <laughs> oh, Cause somebody might try to rustle you out of town or something like that. Or it's my, it's my prized antenna. I'm not leaving this thing out of my sight. Exactly. So what was the It'll be inspiration house. for building that antenna? Like how, what, how did you, how'd you come up with that? Well, uh, I think one of the main inspirations for me, well, I got a lot. I've got a, um, I mean, I've got a, I've got a fab, fabulous Elma uh, mic from Burnaby Radio, and uh, also my uh, my other Elma, who's um, who's really hands on, and we all love him. Is uh, where's Mr. Mud? And uh, Mr. Mud right. was uh, fiddling around with some uh, metal tape, and um, and I've I've known about metal tape for quite a while because I had to get some ducting done uh, on on a flue uh, at a previous house that my wife and I owned. And it just literally occurred to me, well, the thing about with uh, metal tape, what if there was a way to have it so it could be somewhat uniform, um, completely invisible and elevated and out of the road and sort of, you know, be, like to be sort of, yes, a compromise, but be the ultimate sort of uh, not in your face antenna that you could sit Bell. there and play radio and, uh, and, and have some fun with it. And it just sort of occurred to me, well, hang on a minute. What about I was out running one day and I thought about the measurements and the the uh, dimensions of a 10 by 12 tarp and it just sort of clued into me. Hang on. You want to see a bit of ta tarp? You want some ham porn? There we go. I'll put it in the yeah, background. Yeah, there you go. There we go. So you guys are very soft. So if I'm shouting, I'm very sorry, but I do shout a lot. Anyway, just ask my wife. Um, but anyway, about the tarp is uh, I was out running and I thought, well, hang on. If you've got a 10 by 12, that's 10 plus 10, that's 20 plus 12 plus 12. You've got 44, uh, is that right? You've got 44 feet essentially of uh, surface area. And then I started doing the math of what a full wave loop would look like on 15 meters. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to give it a try, you know, and uh, just started taping it and uh, got to the, got to sort of the feed point. I thought, well, okay, I'm going to put the feed point closer to one edge than the other. And instead of being in the middle, uh, solely for the purpose of being able to do this when it's windy, being able to just essentially tie off the uh, tie off the BNC connector, which is going up to the wires. Where is it? There we are. And there you go, guys. So go the wires that go up to the uh, the loop that I can actually just tie it there. So if I ever needed a tuner, uh, I could just attach the tuner to this post. Um, nice. And in, and, in, and in addition to that, I, what, the other thing that inspired me is like, well, hang on a minute. If I make a full loop for 15, what about then if I have these, you know, I've got essentially what, uh, what's a full wave loop for 15, 50, 45 feet. Yep. I can then take these wires uh, and I can put one side to the tuner and then have that just as a hanging long wire with a, and then uh, so the tuner long wire. So it now becomes, I guess, a random wire throw out a counterpoise on the ground, uh, connect the tuner to this, and then I can uh, tune it up so I can be camping and have uh, multi-bands and, no and nobody knows what I'm doing. Nobody nobody have any idea. And there looks like yeah. there's a – you would just have one ring around that tarp or is there two? No, mate. I've actually got this thing. Okay, so here's where it gets even wilder. I've actually got this inner one now that's resonant for 10. So that's a 10-minute loop, um, and then that's a 15-meter loop. So I think I actually might have texted you about this, Ape. So one thing I've noticed, there's no 
capacitive coupling that's going on with this. I can run them in phase and I can run them out of phase. And when it's in phase, that's really cool. It's almost like it's a, uh, I won't say a fan dipole, but it's like a fan tarp pole. I don't know what you call it, but, yeah, uh, like you know, and then packs. I'm thinking, well, what about if you put like a, I don't do six meters and you ask me the guys in the discord, that's like alien stuff. I don't even know. If, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even have 50 megahertz on my radio. Sorry, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I could probably oh, have a missing, man. I could probably have a uh, two meter moxon in here, uh, and then maybe ooh, six meters. Uh, lo and behold, or heaven forbid, but it could be done, I guess. You know. Yeah, it's just a very, very creative setup, and um, you, very stealth. Like you would, ne you would never ever suspect that of being an antenna. Um, I might have to put one on top of my house and say that my house was damaged in a hailstorm or something and I'm waiting for the insurance money and that way I can keep a tarp tent on the roof. For the next four years? That seems legit, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I live in Alabama. I can get away with that. I don't know that you That's could. right. So I've seen you operate that thing on your live streams. So would you? how, how would you say the performance is and in, in, uh, you know, any well, directionality or anything like that? Yeah, okay. So so what's, um, what's very interesting today, I uh, did a comparison so, so so here is the rest of the antenna farm the kitty hawk there as uh, my buddy charlie uh whiskey seven romeo tango alpha calls it looks like the kitty hawk early aviation uh so that so basically that thing let's say that that was an s9 on so these are all one to one on 15 meters okay so that was the i tried to make this as objective as possible so this guy here was say uh five nine an s9 the tape measure, holy smokes. This tape measure was probably, uh, it's noisier, but uh, you saw the stream, Ape. I mean, you saw, I uh, heard Ray, VK4, uh, Romeo, um, uh, Alpha Ho uh, November Hotel, VK4, November Hotel, Ray in Queensland. I was louder on the tape measure than I was on the beam, probably because I've got the beam facing southeast. But that was about, I think overall, that's a 5.9, the beam, this was about a 5.8, five, 5.7, five, maybe two S units max. The tarp was uh, two to three S units less um, at max. But what I really like about the tarp is the noise level. I mean, we know that the noise to uh, signal to noise ratio on a beam, uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it drops, i.e. the signal boosts and the, the, the noise drops. But I even found that even more um, more uh, noticeable on the tarp, which is awesome. So to have it, you know, you could be sitting in a park if you're there for like, you know, our buddy Kent, uh, Kilo 7, um, what, uh, uh, what, is, what is his, you know, we all know uh, Charlie Alpha Romeo, uh, who does FT8 for months. You could just sit there and have that as the ultimate uh, FT8 uh, low noise uh, uh, little antenna. Yeah, well, with loop antennas, the lower they are to the ground, the more envis they become. So they really only hear signals that are coming down at a very steep angle. And that's why they're quieter. So that's why some people do a loop on the ground, because it's only picking up stuff that comes straight down. When you raise it up a little bit, you're, you're getting stuff that comes in at, at an angle, but it's 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 much more compressed. Like the the your 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 radiation your gain lobe is much more compressed uh -huh. um, to 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 a more vertical. And that's why that's why they're more quiet. I would think that that would be a little bit more of an invisi antenna, but you you're you got out pretty far on it, right? So you, I mean, you're definitely going beyond like three or four hundred miles, which is a typical invis range. Oh. Oh mate, absolutely, and uh, and Ray heard me, so that to me, I think I was doing that their the, the stupid uh, ham jazz uh, crazy uh, dance. I was definitely doing it when I could be heard on the tarp all the way to Australia. Yeah, I was praying that you weren't going to fall down. Eight thousand five hundred miles, ape on a on a on a damn blue tarp. I mean, come yeah. on. I was like, somebody sit him down so he so he can make the live stream if he falls. <laughs> <laughs> Now, ham so, till it hurts. Uh, have I done an RF safety exposure, mate? You know what? I haven't. And I thought about it. I spend a lot of time on my cell phone and uh, I nuke my coffees two or three times a day. And maybe I should. Uh, I even thought about getting an EME measurement, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think I might just take the. I don't know. I, no, so I haven't, mate. I, I haven't. But I was a little aware last time I was out at the park. I didn't sit under it. Um, I don't know. That's definitely a good consideration. I actually uh, don't know what the exposure would be. 
Uh, well, do you have to do that in Canada, or is that? I think that's an FCC rule. I don't know if it's, it's a rule FCC, in Canada. Yeah, I don't know about the Canadians. Yeah. Well, in Australia, you do. Um, every antenna, the EME, every antenna, and uh, uh, Bruce VK, uh, VK two. Uh, sorry, Bruce, I don't remember your call sign, buddy, but he uh, warned me about that with the Kitty Hawk. It has to be out of hands reach by law in Australia. Um, I guess the, I don't know if that's people being able to touch it. So that's that's one of the considerations or uh, requirements in Australia. So well, the, oh, go, go ahead, ahead Jim. No, no, you. Well, I was going to say the inverse square law, it falls off pretty rapid because I, I did them for here with the DX commander and at 100 watts, it's not far before it's within the permissible. What the, And they've got two terms, one for accidental exposure and one for maximum permissible exposure. And I don't remember exactly what it is. I'd have to dig out the piece of paper I actually filled out and filed away in a drawer somewhere. But I mean, it's like 10 feet or less for 100 watts on a on a vertical. So now I don't know how that would translate to your tarp hex, your hex tarp. But uh, I don't know. It, it ain't far. <clears throat> well, I learned today that Simon doesn't operate at 100 watts. He operates at 100,000 milliwatts. Is uh... okay. <laughs> Right. Well, that's Kevin. It's all Kevin's fault. Our our favorite brother from a different mother, uh, Mr. QRP. G'day, right, Kevin, right. if you're watching. Uh, kilo zero, kilo lima bravo. Even uh, check out the end of the tape measure video I did yesterday. The uh, Kevin even has a cameo on his bicycle to get 20 watts out. Honk honk on his little bike horn. And uh, but Kevin always talks in milliwatts, and uh, and he was the one that inspired me about. Uh, yeah, that he runs sometimes a hundred thousand milliwatts. <laughs> yeah, so in, you're in, you're in Victoria, Canada, is that right? That's right, eight. Yep. And I'm assuming that's just north of Portland or Washington State or something like that. Yeah, it's basically. You know what? It's funny. It's below the 49th parallel. We're actually uh, we're due uh, due west of um, between Bellingham and uh, Seattle, uh, so sort of Mount Vernon Everett area. So we're actually. Uh, we're like 60 miles basically south of Vancouver. So I don't know who drew the 49th parallel, but I think they might have had a few Miller lights or maybe something a bit <laughs> yeah. stronger, mate. It's because <laughs> it's because the Earth is a globe is why there's no, a curve no, 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 in no, 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 no. It's flat. Only, so, only in the crazy flat sneezed world. as they were drawing that line. It, it, and if, it's, if the world was flat, that would explain it. Miller light could have been a factor in that. If it was but, flat, why do we use grid squares? They actually big Silence. Head. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> no response. <laughs> right. Because grid so, circles are stupid. Yeah. Can we hear about that? I want to hear about the Kitty Hawk. So that that's the other one where I was just. So Simon, when you do, when you show your antennas, I'm just thinking to myself, how in the world does this thing work? So can you t talk a little bit about what we I, got If there? I knew, I, I would tell you, mate. <laughs> okay. So the Kitty Hawk. Okay. So uh, so my Elma, and. Uh, you know what? I'll get philosophical later in the show about uh, about you blokes and how much I love you guys and uh, what the, 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 what you mean to me. And uh, oh yeah, you guys have. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it right now. So guys, I, I really want to shout out to uh, Ape and the guys. Uh, Ape is one of the smartest, uh, uh, funniest, um, most sarcastic guys that I've ever met. And, handsome, uh, handsome. And he's got an absolute oh, heart get, of gold. You get the sarcastic and, uh, part right. i got to, yeah, I got to say this. That, um, and same, you, I, I'm going to use a little bit of an analogy here. When I was first starting out in the jazz industry, um, there were two guys that I remember that, that metaphorically put a hand down to help me get into the, uh, into the big time, uh, Ian Smith and John Withers. And um, they gave me my first break. I was a terrible trumpet player. But they gave me my first regular gig at the Fountain Inn on Thursday nights in Port Melbourne. And uh, the analogy is you remember the guys that put the hand out there to help you when you're nobody. And uh, I've, I've got a tiny YouTube channel and uh, the guys, all the guys you see on the screen here, you guys mean the world to me. You, you're there. You, you put the hand out. You gave me a leg up. You, you just you, you just reached out. You're like my Elmers and brothers. Hayden is another, and uh, Chris Digital Analog Ham, and you just remember yeah. that. Re you remember the guys that uh, that were there to help you when you when you nobody, and just for that, I'm eternally grateful. So I just wanted to get that out of the road before I. Anyway, well, so I love you guys. Thank you. Well, well, thank you for the kind words. We we try. I mean, that's our whole goal is to just uh, share what we do with Ham Radio and help people mm -hmm. and have fun with everybody. And uh, 
That's what it's all about. Now, you you were talking about uh, Chris. He's the, another very talented uh, ham and uh, very smart. We bounce, we bounce stuff off of him. And then I was just I just asked Hayden if he wanted to come on the show, but he's stuck at the office. And I told him, I said, "Well, call out sick. You, you, yeah. you got you got time. Go home. I think I he go only home. works like two days a week. I mean, you whatever. Yeah." Yeah. I know Chris is a, I speak to him probably every day or every other day. Yeah, he's a he's a champion. He's hilarious. Uh, the British humor and a real inspiration. So uh yeah, it's a it's a you're right, Ape. It's a it's a fabulous community and uh oh you know what? It's I'm I'm getting all tingly and stuff. So anyway, enough of that. Let's uh let's look at this uh the kitty hawk. All right, so I don't you know what I, I'm afraid that if I try and turn this microphone around, let me see if I can do a present. Can I do that, Ape? Yeah, we can put you on full screen. How about that? It's your show. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do full mug, and I'm going to see if I can turn. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can. There we go. Look at that. All right. So with the Kitty Hawk, uh, basically, this is an old uh, speaker stand from way back. And, um, yeah, essentially, there's the, uh, there's the coupler that goes over to that. And then there's the PVC. It's a... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully not bowing too much in the middle, but uh, <laughs> I try to keep it as um, somewhat as uh, as horizontal as possible. And uh, there it is. So these are tent poles. And uh, my buddy Mike, uh, my Elmer Mike uh, Burnaby Radio, said to me oh, years ago, "Hey guy, hey mate, you need to try tent poles." So I said, "Really?" So I built a uh, I built a vertical out of um, out of tent poles, and I used uh, one of those M10 connectors on one of the ends to uh to make it fit uh, m10 conversion i think sorry m10 into uh, uh 3824 and then basically all i did is i made it into a vertical and uh and then it just sort of occurred to me well what about uh if if we if i sort of made and then that was sort of it and then i spoke to mike more about it he said well you could actually have two of them going off like a uh, like a v a bit like what the hex tenor is from alpha but we didn't right. really ever talk about a beam. And one day I did, it just sort of occurred to me, well, what about uh, if we try making this into a beam? And, uh, you know, I just sort of, you know, I've, I've had, well, as I continue, I've many, most of my, uh, my, most of my projects usually fail, but I try not to give up on them. And uh, with this one, I just sort of I persevered with it. And I bought another, I bought myself another, um, uh antennas uh, sorry a uh, tape measure or tent sorry my antennas are confused yeah. i used and uh, i bought myself two tent pole kits so that i could do a front uh, a front uh, radiating element and a back uh, reflector so essentially then i added them so i think initially they come with uh, something like 11 or 12 sections and i started doing a bit of math and <laughs> piecing it together and realized that the most that i could get is 20. So 20 tent poles is pretty uh, out there in the wind. Um, and I tried to make it look like a bit like the San, Fran San Francisco gate uh, bridge. Um, sure. uh, but then, so that's maximum. So that's 25 feet out in the wind, basically. And then from there, I, uh, I put a little piece of uh, uh, dowel in the middle here. I'll just show you up close if you can see the feed point. Oh, you can't really see it into the sun. Sorry, guys. Um, but right there, essentially where I've got the uh, the feed point going into the terminal block, I just got a little piece of dowel that was uh, three eighths, so the same diameter as the tent pole. And then when you buy a tent pole set, it comes with a uh, like a sleeve. And I don't know the imperial measurement, me measurement, but it's like one or two sizes larger. Uh, and it is aluminium. So I just slided that over the, the uh, two tent poles that I kept with the elastic band in uh in uh suspension here and then basically uh butted them up to the uh the piece of dowel and then put the sleeve uh, put the sleeve over it or before i put the sleeve i just wrapped it all up in tape to uh to insulate it and then and then there we go so there's the two radiating elements and they're inside and the, the, they're inside the, the pole so there the, you go the, the radiating element is inside the pole Sorry, say that again, Abe. The pole is the radiating element. So the okay, so the whole the, so it's a metal pole then is what you're using. No, 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 all, no, no, no. All of that's PVC. That's all. Uh, that's all uh, PVC. So do you have a wire inside the tent pole? Oh, sorry. No, the, the no, they're PVC, metal tent So all of this that's schedule eighty. That's schedule forty. So that's all PVC, 
and this is all aluminium, mate. So uh, okay. So uh, I had to painstakingly, and Don, uh, November five, Sierra Kilo Tango is doing it as we speak. You do have to um, you do have to uh, get rid of that anodization between each of the uh, the connections all the way along to get that continuity. Wow, and then, and then so when you when you shorten this, you just fold the ends up, and then it's I guess it's basically going to fold it. The folded That's right, mate. So essentially, all I do, and I always leave a long string here just so I can drop it down, and then. Um, yeah, so I know that when I've got two folded over, that's 15 metres. And then when I do four, it's 10 metres. And then when I have it fully out, it's 17 metres. And then on the reflector, uh, all I do is I just take one off that and uh, that's uh, 10 metres. And then when I have it fully on, it's 15 and then 17. And then I'm working on a, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, Pro, a program to try to get 20 on it. I've been using these uh, these things that I'm calling the squiddies, which uh, I'm working out capacitive hats and whether these work to save using length. So instead of using length, you use more of them. So I've been fiddling around with, uh, with using Ethernet cable and multi strands. And uh, one thing I have discovered, but I need to do more research on it. And um, I, I just did this little test yesterday with Wes, with Mr. Mudd, and uh, maybe you guys can uh, fill me in on this. So we all know about putting capacity hats at the end of an antenna or at the top of vertical. Right. But what I didn't realize, and this is a part that blows my mind, absolutely blows it, is that if you then turn around and put a capacity hat at the feed point, you even drop the SWR even more. Now, I don't know why. Maybe that's uh, black magic of ham radio. So what about if you had a... Uh, a squiddy, as I call it, a Ethernet cable right at the feed point, and then you've got all of the length, the radiating element, and you have another one there. So the gold. So that's so that's sort of what I'm trying to work on. So so, so Simon, just just um, I did a video on where I did a rotatable dipole, and you just drop wires from the ends to make it longer. You could probably do something like that. Yeah. And get you know maybe make we get you're already at 17. You could probably get 20 out of it. Just really, like Chuck. So you did. So where did you put the wire? Just at the end out there. You just you can you can clip them on. Actually, it. I, I just did it for a video, and I'm I'm about ready to redo it. But um, yeah, you just hang them and you just tune them for that. You, you you could do all the tuning any other time, you know, and then just clip them on each time. Maybe do like a some kind of a like a even a power pole or something to unplug them. Well, that's oh, how the, that would work. You can ZBL. also. You can, take on the um g5rv i can't remember exactly the name of it though but it, it's like that where the ends of the dive the ends of the doublet hang straight down yeah you can also reverse what you have i did a 20 meter one time a buddy of mine gary gave me measurements for a 20 meter it's all out of regular aluminum stuff that i had from another antenna and i instead of instead of a reflector it, it had a, a driven and a and a it had the driven and then the um What's the front one? A driver. Yes, John's got it. John, John Gendron's got the antenna I was talking about. That one yeah. um, has the end oh, of yeah. it where, where it hang, they hang down about six feet, if I remember correctly. I mean, it, it won't be as efficient as if it was probably straight out, but it'll still work. Hmm. Know yeah, no, that's um, th that's really cool. And you keep it, you, you actually have a camera on that antenna when you're operating too, right? <laughs> you like that, yeah. uh, You like that, Ape? I yeah, sure I do. do, mate. It's called the antenna cam. So he would have Correct. his live stream split with you know him on one side and then the antenna cam on the other, so you can see where it's pointing. Yeah, let's just say that tell us the phone company love me, mate. <laughs> yeah, right, because your minutes <laughs> right are or, or, or racking. Well, or, or yeah, racking so up I, and one thing, well, as as we all know, guys, uh, live streaming you're absolutely fraught with danger, and uh, Murphy's Law is ready to bite you in the butt at every corner. So I try to make it as uh, redundant. Um, well, I try to have it. I try to always have redundancy. Uh, as far as much as I can so that I have my phone on a separate stream to my quote unquote iPad that is the the brains of it you know what so if one goes down it's, it's not the end of the stream right 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 so you're good to go well this morning I watched your video on the uh, tape measure antenna that you put together 
and uh, you were learning the joys of vertical antennas and lower takeoff angles. It sounded like today, and and yep. again, I was just amazed. Well, well, all of your antennas, you you get amazing range on those things. You're making great contacts, getting great signal reports. But it looks like the t the tape measure might be the new favorite. It is, mate. It's it's easy. Um, and the, and the other thing too, it's a bit like I won't say a placebo per se, but I know it's a, it's a, just a known entity. So I know when I get to the park. I, I can I can turn up. There's no anxiety of like, oh man, I got to set this all up, and you know, and if it's windy with the tarp, you know, that's an issue. And uh, with with the uh, with the kitty hawk, you know, there's a lot of variables, and you need you need real estate, right? You need space. Yeah. But I know I can just literally turn up with um, a fishing pole, which is two, you know, two lengths of fishing pole, a piece of uh, five foot uh, PVC, uh, my my wood block that I've got here. You know, there it is there. I've got that. And then I can just turn up and I can be on the air in basically 11 minutes. And I can speak to the world. And I can have that thing resonant on every band. And I didn't bring the Mad Dog Coil with me, uh, which and Marty's Mad Dog Coil is awesome. But I made a uh, Meg 7, which is just 13 wines, I think five micro Henry's. And then basically uh, what I do is I just screw this onto... Similar to what I did with the Mad Dog Coil Ape, I just screw this onto the. It's not even a connected uh, peel. Uh, sorry, connected um, uh, three eight twenty four. But I just screw that into there, and then I just run. Uh, I run the tape measure through that, and just add that in series or in uh, in circuit with the tape measure, and then I've got forty meters. It's basically at about seventeen feet. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, I saw the video that you did on that. Um, I watched your the Meg Seven build video, which is which is pretty good. <clears throat> People don't realize, and I think that's part of the, the point of this the stream is, is that how easy it is to build antennas like this oh. for a fraction of what you would pay for commercially made commercial. antennas, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. But, and and you know what? I'll put it out to everybody. My my email is va seven bix. Please, if you want any help building any of these, I'd love to help you. And uh, I know the jury is out about uh, where do you, where do you spend your money on antennas or uh, or radios. And look, if I if I uh, had if I had good uh, management or uh, HOA at home, and I could have a big multi bander, and and the missus didn't mind, I'd say hell yeah, I'll spend a few grand on a Cushcraft and or a Step IR. But if you're coming out to the park, spend your money on a fabulous seventy three hundred or the Yasu equivalent or uh, the nine nine one or whatever it is, or and and just build the antennas it's just it's fun and when they work it's just so rewarding i can't believe the joy that i get and that's one of the reasons why i'm just always so happy when i come out here i just love you know it's just it's it's just very intrinsic and uh, organic it feels like wow this is real and these antennas work you know now we've we've talked to each other a couple three times when you were out at a park and it's about 2800 crow miles between me and you and yeah. we're we're on several I've talked to you on several potas and you were on various antennas. Some of your sketchier builds, maybe. Do you remember which one? Yeah, the, the sketchiest on? of the sketchies, big Jim. It was the uh it was probably I think it was the tape measure, mate. It was either the tape measure or there's something involving Ethernet cable too. Uh, oh, and mate. your, your, your uh, radials well, you know was what? a bunch there's of no shortage of Ethernet cable, mate. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, um, you were talking about those squiddies, uh, the capacitance hat. Like those have to be round, though, like kind of like a cobweb almost. Like you want all the, all the, all the pieces of that to be spread out. So you, you'd have to come up with some sort of ring, right? And then the, and then have the wires going in, going in all the different directions. I'd be interested to see how you how you come up with that design. Um, maybe thread the end of the tent pole or something like that to kind of wind it on there, like a wagon wheel or something like that. Um, but it, yeah, it would, it would, and I, yeah, I'm, I mean, your, your ears must be burning, mate, because I was, you know, I've been chatting to uh, Mr. Mud about this and racking my brain about, you know, how, how do you get away from that capacitive coupling? And I even had this crazy idea. Like, I, I, I am, I've, I've got to say, guys, just generally speaking, I'm all about. Uh, I think you know that I'm, I'm typically about resonant antennas. That's just, I guess, that's my neuroses, and I just love them. And, and when I. Uh, if I can avoid putting on a loaded coil at, I'd pretty much say I'll, I'll do it. And if there's a way, I don't know. I, I, I guess my point is with the, with these squiddies is, for example, is a capacitive hat, is it linear? For example, what happens if I have eight wires of one foot long, right? 
and I can work it out so they're all dangling apart and they're not sort of interacting and all that sort of coupling and stuff like that. So what happens if I add 16 of them of the same length? Now is RF, okay, so this is a, it's not a rhetorical question, it actually is a question, is RF saying, okay, your length is one foot. It doesn't matter if you've got eight wires or 80 wires, it's one foot. Or is the RF saying, hey, you've got all these different wires that are not necessarily in series, but it's essentially adding length to your antenna. And that's the part that's doing my head in. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert, but what, what I would say is, is that so when you talk about antennas and radiation patterns, you have near field and you have far field. And so when you key up, you have all kinds of pandemonium from radiation coming off of various parts of your antenna based on the voltage and the current as it travels through the through the elements. And it basically bounces off of each other because it's moving around so fast. And then it forms a longer field set of lobes that go out and go all, all the way up to the ionosphere and bounce down and all that stuff. So when you have those squiddies, if it's like a mop hanging off the end of that, yeah. you're going to have tremendous amount of RF coming off of every single piece of that that uh, networking cable, right? Like all, all like that that broom. Yep. Yep. I would expect that to cause problems because that that, that our energy would be bouncing around off of each other. So that's why, like sometimes, if you have like a, uh, a street lamp that's within a quarter quarter wave of your antenna, or you have like a swing set or something like that out in the yard it's going to impact your, your radiation pattern. Hmm. Um, the, the more of that you have, the less likely you are to get a uniform directional predictable radiation pattern off of that. So that's why they like capacitance hats are typically like round or they're, they're like a hub and spoke design, right? So they can control the way that the energy comes off. And it's the exact same way like a Yagi works. So you're using, you're using that reflector off of the back. So your 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 element is shooting radiation that way. It's hitting that and then and then bouncing off in a controlled manner to direct a beam one direction, and it's also blocking um, your gain on the backside. So that's why you had that signal to noise ratio thing that you were talking about earlier. Um, I, th that said, the squiddy might be the greatest invention in the world. You just got <laughs> you just just got to try it and see and see what happens, right? Well, mate, and that's and that's and I guess that's me, right? I, I'm. I, I read theory books and I wish I wish we had have had YouTube or the internet or um, were encouraged to think more three dimensionally uh, 50 or 45 years ago because everything was so two dimensional, right. right? A textbook. This is this is the answer. So therefore right. it must be, you know what I mean? So, well, like if you had come to me a year ago and told me that you were building a tarp antenna, I would have told you, don't waste your time. It's insane. You, you know what I mean? But I think we've seen because so many people contact us as like coffee and ham radios and tell us about the stuff that they're doing that I'm I'm not even surprised anymore when I see somebody do something like that and it works fantastic. I'm like, well, I mean, it's just another one that that you would you would have never expected. Like I, I had a buddy who took a um, NFED half wave and he ran it around his fence like four or five feet off the ground. And I was like, dude, you're, don't even do that. It's a waste of time. And then he started, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm making contacts. And, and he did great with it. Yeah. So, you know, have at it, experiment away. Well, and here's another one. I, you know, I mean, this is, I know this is uh, probably on page two of the ARRL. I'm just going to sit <laughs> back away from the sun there. Hang on. Wow, I can't believe it. Summer is here. So this guy here. I was, uh, I just had, I have, so everybody loves sushi, right? So everybody loves sushi. And what do they give you when you go to the sushi town? They give you, uh, they give Nobsticks. you chopsticks, right? So Ethernet cable, the most expensive thing this on this was the terminal block, which cost me uh, about, you know, what, 60 cents or 50 cents. But here we go. There's, uh, <laughs> there's a fan dipole that is resonant on 10, 15 and 20. And uh, I've, I've used uh, chopsticks and I think it so cost somebody me called it earlier in the show that you were going to make a chopstick antenna. To build. And it what, works great. What gauge is that wire, Jim? Do you know? Because you, you missed it's the 26. Cable. Okay. So it's not too small. It's 24 or 26. I think it's 26. It's like hair. <clears throat> but so yeah, that's what you know. It's solid the, copper. Right, that, that, my bag. That's, that's what you use on your on your <laughs> tape Jesus measure, Christ. right? At, at your, yeah, I'll show, the, uh, I'll show you the antenna farm here, uh, uh, Ape. So that's another thing. I get one of the most. So what, you know, you get a lot of uh, uh, common questions when you're, uh, you know, about your antennas. And one of the other, one of the main questions that I get. Uh oh. Guess we didn't need to know. 
Uh oh, device not going I wonder if he knows that he's to been. <laughs> no, he's still shouting away. Out. He's still talking. Figure it out. He's like, mate, mate, if the... you take a look. I wonder here. what the people walking around him think. <laughs> there's somebody with him because there's a guy that keeps showing up in the background that did. Yeah, yeah that, he was with him just... during the live stream. But kind of made you right mad like, when he when he made that like uh, we should call the authorities. A temple, a temple one. I've had that in the in the workings for like a couple of years now. Just never. There did. we go. At least he pulled the trigger. Yep, he's back, sort of. We thought Sorry maybe the Sasquatch got you, Simon. <laughs> okay, so one of the most common questions I get is, hey, how do you run, how much power are you running through that Ethernet cable? And uh, and uh, maybe, guys, I'm, I'm missing the boat here, but I tell them I'm running 100 watts. And provided yeah. your antenna is resonant, uh, it doesn't really make any difference with what you run through it. I, I wouldn't want to run, you know, like 500 or a kilowatt, but there it is there. So as Chris, mm. uh, digital analog ham calls it, that's my soccer goal, woohoo! And uh, I've just got the little bits of uh, dowel. I've got like a, a piece of uh, six foot or eight foot dowel going across, and then I just cut another one in half, and then there's my soccer field. And uh, yeah, I have no problem. Um, it doesn't get hot, it doesn't melt. I never smell acrid smell of burning wires or anything like that, and there's my buddy Doug. G'day, Doug. And uh, yeah, so it, yeah, and, and guys, and. And can you guys uh, elaborate on that about resonant antennas and using 26 gauge wires? Am I crazy? Well, we know I'm crazy. Well, if you just had one wire and it was 26 gauge, I would say you might want to think about that. But the fact that you have those wires in parallel with each other, your energy is getting split across all of them, right? So if you have 10 wires and 100 watts, now it's 10 watts on each wire. Hollywood, if I'm wrong on that, call me out. But I, I think so. You have like it looks like you have like 20 wires there, right? Uh, I have 16 wires at eight feet nine inches. So what's 16 divided? It's like 12, right? Yeah, um, and that that total wavelength it works out to be 42 meters of wavelength. I actually learned that from Callum. Um, he uh, he basically said uh, you want four times the wavelength of the band that you want to work. So 10 meters. So that's so that was sort of the original number of. Of uh, so I try to I I'd like to ideally have 40, 40 meters of um of uh, radials or counterpoises whatever it might be yeah and so the, a lot of people use the term counterpoise interchangeably to to mean different things and there's a lot of debate as to what the word counterpoise really means because there's never really been an official definition that, that's universally accepted across the community so I always just call a single rate a radial a counterpoise. And then anything beyond that, I would call a ground plane, but I might not be right. And I even go so far as Boy, to call right. the shield side of a dipole the counterpoise, and that really gets people upset, but it, it really is a counterpoise um, by the technical definition. But you use that, you move those goalposts around to change the directionality of that antenna, right? Ape, I think there needs to be a video on this, mate. <laughs> I haven't done it. You know what? I... Ugh. It's, a, it's that it's that four-letter word that starts with T, right, called time. And, uh, it, you know, it takes a bit to come and set it up, but I would love to do a PSK. I, I tried it. I want to do, like, objective um, reports, but I I have done that. Um, I think I did it once before. And that's interesting because, Jim, uh, Jim, we, we were chatting about the directionality of these radials, and you were thinking that that means – so let's say I've got these facing southeast – so, and you were saying that you think that the signal is uh, would be directing to the uh, 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 radiating to the northwest, correct? No, it I was asking if that had any effect on directionality. Yeah, but that yeah. was the example I was using. Does that change yeah. anything? And the reason I ask that is when I first got started in ham, I bought a Alpha FMJ antenna, which is a tripod with a whip. I saw it on Steve Good Games channel, like five hundred bucks. Yeah. Yes, I, I'd be glad to sell it if anybody's interested. So, and it's got, a, it's got a match unit on it and then like about a 15 or 17 foot whip that fastens to the match unit. And they sell it with uh, a counterpoise wire to clip to the base of it, to the, to the ground side. But they also have an Envis wire on it and they mention putting the end now this was they were talking about the envis wire but it's just basically another radial because it again clips to the same place that the ground wire clips to and you put it on the side opposite you want to do envis so that's hmm. what gave me that thought about the radials on your antenna because when you see people talk about radials they're always talking about spreading them out you know evenly yeah. around the base of the antenna kind of thing 
So I didn't know if you'd ever mess with that. That, but that was my my question then. So Great idea. The, the the thing is, is that when you have a ground plane, and what what it does is, is that when your vertical antenna shoots radiation in all direction, and it shoots radiation towards the ground, and so like your 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 ground plane or your radials do two different things. One is is they add capacitance and couple your antenna to the ground. But the other one is, is that they minimize ground loss if they're long enough. So what will happen is, is the radiation comes off of your antenna, hits the ground. And if you have lossy, poor conductivity soil, it just gets absorbed by the ground and that radiation is wasted. If you have a radial network there, what will happen is, is that that radial network will bounce the signal up and out. And what that does is it condenses the lobe. And that's why you get a stronger de a low angle takeoff on the side where the radials are. So you should get directionality to where your radials are. Now, in your case, Simon, your antenna is technically an elevated vertical. It's not a ground-mounted vertical because right. it looks like you're about right. two and a half, three feet up or so. Yep. So in, in cases like that, you actually have to tune the combination between your, your radials and your element together as a continued system because those are actually acting as elements. They're not really acting yep. as, as ground radials at that point. So they're actually radiating as well. So that's, that's why with the alpha antenna that the Jim's talking about the way that they run their NVIS radial, it's actually part of the antenna that's actually radiating yep. current. There's current and voltage going down there and it's radiating the same way. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, so big inspiration to me is uh, Greg, KJ6ER, the, the original uh, Predator, which is now the performer, was the elevated right, right. Uh, 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 vertical. But I think I mentioned to you, Ape, and uh, Jim, we uh, did a stream or we uh, we chatted about this once upon a time. And, uh, and uh, you, you can maybe elaborate on this too, guys, is what's interesting is when I, for example, this uh, the soccer field here with the Ethernet cable, when I lay that, those on the ground, I only need 15 and a half, never 16, so between 15 and a half and, say, 15 feet 9 inches of vertical to get it resonant on 20 metres. But when I elevate them, I need all of 17 feet 4 inches. And that, to me, means you want – obviously, I think you want more yeah. you want more vertical. And that I think that was my problem in Australia. I had too much – I had almost too much radial out, and the tape measure for 10 metres was only, like, 4 feet long. Or too well, high off the ground. <clears throat> we got uh, two okay. things real quick. M Mike had to run, and he gave us a super chat. Thank you, Mike. Hey, <clears throat> Mike. Much appreciated. And then our buddy John, he's giving money to the Dayton Beer Fund. I'll be drinking my Dayton Beer Fund here watching everybody. I am not going to Dayton this year, but thank you very much. And then Too much walking. If I go down to our place. And that's that, that music was uh, that's, uh thanks. that's trippy. That was this guy, this that's guy, good. not that guy, that guy. Yeah, <clears throat> uh -oh. you started, I, I'm Eric's... sorry, Ape. I thought you said get it, but you, you're good, man. Hamstick Eric is saying the buddy pole was out several years, several years before the predator, but the, I don't know if the buddy pole is the same antenna. I don't think it is, no, it's right? Different. It's different. I think the Predator, isn't that a CB company originally, CB Antennas? Oh, yeah, I think it predator, is. Predator, yeah. I think yeah. so. That's old. That's really old. Way old. I, I, yeah, I was thinking like 70s, 80s old. Yeah. 60s. <clears throat> so what we, we did when we know. were in uh, Florida is, is that our, our Poseidon, which is a vertical antenna, we actually took all the radials and pointed them to one side to get directionality and, and point the antenna. Now, it'll still radiate the other way. But yeah. you have more gain on the side with the with the radials. Uh, Big John has a great question for, for you guys. How would an elevated radial affect the antenna we're currently discussing? Well, they, you have to you have to tune them in conjunction with the with the vertical. I think that's what Simon was saying. Is that based yeah. off of how he had it mounted? He had to he had to adjust it. Um, yep. And when you raise them up off the ground, they actually radiate more. When they're on the ground, they're really reflecting radiation. Is, uh, is is the primary difference. Well, <clears throat> I did a test um, with um, a buddy, uh, Daryl, November 4, Zulu Delta X-ray, where I, he's in Tennessee. That's probably a good single hop from here. I don't know how far Tennessee is from BC. 
Um, but basically, on 15 metres, when the radials were laid on the ground with a tape measure, I was about a 5.3, maybe 5.4, if that. I was a 5.7, 5.8 when they were elevated. And it's just like, okay, there you go. Thank you, Don. Don has given away five memberships. One is to Mary, one's to Dave Wilson, one is to Prep Ham Paul, Mike, and two MAK, who's not here anymore, and Pamela. N1ZKH. So what that does is it unlocks the secret room in the Toads Discord. So join the Toads Discord and shoot me a DM if you're in there, and uh, we'll get you added to that uh, to that room. To the champagne room. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> There's no ham in the champagne room. So yeah. <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit about your channel while well, we got a few minutes left and talk about what you do? Like you stream almost as much as To, and, uh, oh, and that's <laughs> that's say, that's saying something. I'd love to. Well, I um. I can't thank you guys enough for everything that you've done for me. And uh, uh, so my channel, yeah, I've got a lot of videos coming up. I stream typically Wednesday and Saturdays. I do Saturdays with the beam and Wednesday just here at my local beautiful park with the tape measure. And I try to get one other video out a week. But uh, I do have some big plans. I've got, um, um, as, uh, as has my sister, I've got uh, bad genes as far as I've got heart disease. And, and my big why is uh, I want to start giving back. And uh, one of the things I want to do is I get a lot of super chats. And I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart that, uh, that does that. It's fantastic. But the problem with the super chat is uh, is the YouTubers, and you guys all know what I'm talking about. We only get to see 70% of that. Right. And uh, my my ultimate goal, and guys, if you can help me, I'd love to get, and this is the big why, I'd love to get to 10,000 subscribers. And the big reason is because I can then have a big donate and uh, charity button on the top of every live stream that in lieu of a super chat, you click on that and, and 100% of the money will go to in my case, the Heart Foundation or Cancer Research or uh, Mental Health for Kids, um, which is a big thing. My gosh, the, the, the kids of today, they don't, I think they have it tougher than we had when we were growing up. We used to just punch yeah. everybody up and go and play footy and uh, run around like crazy, no internet and this and that. But uh, anyway, um, so that's sort of the plan with the channel. Um, I love it. It's fantastic. I'd love, to get, I'd love to get to that place where I can give back more and uh, just – just living the dream. I love it. It's it just it brings me such joy. And well, um, can we drop his and being here with you guys chat. is just yeah, I got it. Yeah, so I, I have a link to your channel in the description. So if you're not subbed, uh, go ahead and sub to Simon, and then we're getting ready to drop a link to make it even easier for you. And uh, you make a great point around uh, kids today. And the, the the worst part about it is that the all these manufacturers and companies and distributors and direct market these stuff to kids instead of instead of adults and that, that wasn't the case when we were younger and the pressure that they put on these kids to you know all have the same shoes or all have the same jer jersey or shirt or something like that it is immense and it puts it it makes it makes life difficult for them and uh i think it's a great call simon so we're happy to help you out there oh thanks mate i i just want to i want to do i want to whatever i can do to give back and um I love it. I, I uh, will continue to be crazy and live stream at the park. And uh, yeah, I, I, I get to, I get ridiculous looks and I don't know. That's, you know, it's, I just. Well, I expect the cops to show up one time when you're there <laughs> doing all that. Uh, so, but but uh, you have so much fun while you're doing yeah. it. And, and I think it's a epitomizes what we want in amateur radio is somebody outside having a great time laughing, you know, doing what they love. But the fact that you couple that with all these side projects of building your own antennas out of stuff, it's just stuff, right? That every that everybody has and you show that it works and that and that Sanford uh, you, and Son, that's what he yeah, is of antennas. That you can just have a good time with a tape measure and a couple pieces of networking cable. I mean, everybody's got that around their house. It's fantastic. So I got a couple questions for Simon before before this ends. Uh I'm please less chest, okay? I'm getting excited. I'm just saying. Well, all that all that Aussie chest hair you keep pimping on. He's he's European. They they do that whoa, stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, see, it's frightening me. It's frightening me. Oh my God! Woo, Jesus! I'm verklempt. Hey Jim, did you? I, oh, Lord. I, love, I love you. I'd give you the shirt. I actually, do you want the shirt off my back, Jim? <laughs> no, lad. No, 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 no. You know, you know, I'd give it to you though, right, mate? <laughs> I do know. Um, 
He only Listen, wears Columbia. Did shirts. you get your Did you get your radio set up at your at your Was it your sister's house in Australia? I did, mate. I did. I had some issues with um, with this and that. I absolutely did, and I love it. It's uh, it's rocking. What antenna did you put on that? That's a sixty. I've got a sixty four hundred um, or a sixty six hundred. I can't remember. I've got the sixty four hundred Jim, and I've got the NFED half wave, uh, the eighty one. I think it's what is that one hundred and thirty feet. Okay. Yeah. Great. It's not up high enough, uh, but it's but it's it's uh, it's 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 great. I, it, it's so much fun, and uh, I think I told you I got a runaway once with uh, with FT eight running a hundred watts, and that was really scary. The sister wasn't at the farm, and I'm like, holy crap! So I had to, I, she had to ring up her neighbours to break going into the house and just pull everything out. <laughs> uh, won't it won't it watchdog after a certain amount of time, or we're we using one of the goofy softwares? Well, actually, you know what? If the Flex guys are watching, this would be a great uh, a great bit of firmware, and I think you'd agree with this, Jim. Like the seventy three hundred, if there were if after a few minutes, if uh, if there's a you know if you if you're locked up on full power, if there was just a um, a get out of jail card where it just shut right, everything right. down, it would be great. Right. I think there's um, a heat threshold in it, if I remember right. Okay. I'd have, to, I'd have to look it up, but there is temperature sensing in it, and I, I believe there's a threshold, but it's pretty high. It's like 70 degrees or something like that. You need the UK Chris robot. It's this thing right here. That, that's how he does it. He just turns everything off with that, with that little push-button robot. Yeah, I've got all mine on... on um, smart devices so i can use the amazon app on my phone to tell the amazon thing here to turn stuff off and on just just to prevent stuff like that and to turn it on and off i've, I've been at work and i'll ft8 from work and then it's if it starts storming or something i'll just tell the amazon thing to shut everything down <laughs> well, i don't want to say it because she's listening and she'll you know she'll turn it down right now right right so the next thing for you, Simon, is it going to be perfecting these antennas or are you going to come up with another one? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think that's what we like to hear. No, no, no. Um, well, you know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and I love it. It's it's just uh, it, it, it keeps you up late at night and gets you up early, doesn't it? It's just it's almost like an anti-aging thing or maybe it's an a an aging thing i don't know it uh, depends on the frustration level of the particular antenna at the particular time uh but i'm i've got the, the tape measure i'm so happy with the tarp i'm happy with uh, i've got some ideas but I, I really really want to work on this uh this capacitance hat and i really want to get this beam over the line for 20 meters because that's a uh, i've got a, cro a cross to bear with it that it's great on 10 12 15 17 it's more of a rectangle and i didn't have much luck with the moxon um and i'd love to keep it as a uh, beam so so yes i want to i want to work on that and uh yeah i've got some other ideas and just <laughs> craziness yeah yeah i think i think what chuck's talking about is just a couple of wires like this with alligator clips on the end of them and uh could do that yeah and then just clip these just to the end lightweight of the weight I'd use light. Yeah, wire. well, this is this is actually a, this this is actually a very dangerous power right. cord, but if <laughs> oh, if, if you just if you just do something like that, you can clip clip the wires to the end of the, that dipole, and that might get you to your to your twenty meters. You'll probably only need about two and a half feet on each end. Love it. Might try that. Might or you know what else you could do is is that you might be able to use like um, aluminum welding rod. So I made an antenna out of that, and it's Ooh. it's it's pretty small. And then what you could do is you could clip something like this onto the end of it. Mm -hmm. You might have to put a sleeve over that or something, but then just just clip those onto the end of your end of your tent pole, right? Holy the smokes! Wire's easy and just weight it. Put a little weight sorry, on the sorry, end Jack. of it. The wire is pretty easy because it's light, and you can just you just put like a little small weight at the bottom to kind of keep it straighter, or just tie it to the or tie it down. You're not very high anyhow. You, you actually higher, might probably. be able to take a piece of plastic, right? Like, a, and wrap that metal tape around the plastic, and then whoosh, slide that in somehow. Um, like, make your own lightweight tube or something. Yeah, it's about yeah. I just what about something stupid out of the kitchen, like aluminium foil? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, we used to do that with the TVs what? back in the day. What? We, we can't get that oh, in the no. states, though. Right. <laughs> 
I made a router Let's antenna out of tape. that back in use the your tape, back then. in the two thousands. That's awesome. Well, I think we we're I think we're hitting the end of the hour. Um, did you have anything else you want? Thank you, thank you, Simon. I had a really fun time tonight. It's it's always great uh, talking to you and having you on. Was oh, there anything you wanted to add, or anything you wanted to plug, or anything like that? No, not no, no. I've I've done all of that. Um, but uh, the guys you're seeing on the screen here are the uh, the greatest uh, human beings you'd find anywhere. <laughs> and uh, thanks, guys, for supporting uh, great great channels like Coffee and Ham Radios and uh, and respect respectfully uh, individual uh, channels of these guys and. Uh, Everybody, and uh, you know what? I do want to say thank you to the guys in the UK and other parts of Europe, um, Morkum and uh, Chris, and I'm not sure who, who else is there, but I get a lot of the regular followers, and I know the hours are dreadful for you guys. It's like yeah. it's like one in the morning. So, guys in uh, the north, no, guys over in Europe, thank you so much for staying up so late. And uh, Andy Cowley, you know, you know what? You guys mean the world to us. So, thank you. I think I speak on behalf of everybody. <laughs> I think there's a lot of vampire Dracula types in Europe because they, <laughs> they seem to not need sleep over there. So, right. Um, you know, All right, I'm hitting the end stream button. Thanks for being right, here. Guys. Everybody. Thank you. Appreciate Simon. it. Great show. Thank you for coming, buddy.